Hi everyone, Ravi this side. Welcome to Engineering Adda. So today I am going to discuss how you can use the H2 database as an in-memory embedded database. So if you don't have any installed database, then you can go for the H2 database. So I will be creating a Spring Boot CRUD project and with the help of H2 database, we'll carry out the database work. So uh, let's get started. Let me go to the IntelliJ and let try to create one project and then I will show you how you can create the CRUD project and how you can use H2 database as an in-memory database. So if you have not installed any database on your system, so you can go for the H2 database which is a relational database. There are a couple of in-memory embedded databases like Derby. There are other databases also which are in-memory. I'm going to use H2 database here. So let's get started. Let me create a Spring Root project and then I will show you how you can uh, create the CRUD. Okay, and how you can use H2 database. So let me come here. Let me create a Spring, Spring Boot app with H2 DB, something like that. Okay, let me go next. Okay. Let's say it is, uh, let me name it like database. Okay, let me go next. So we need some starter dependency. Let me use Lombok. Let me use the Spring Babe. And uh, for H2 database, we need to include the H2 database starter dependency. Um, I need uh, this JPA. So this four starter dependency I need for this project. Let me create the project. Let me open it a new tab and it will take few seconds to configure itself and to download the dependency that we have included after that we will start doing our development so what i will do i will try to create the mvc pattern application okay and i will try to create this packages entity service repository controller and in controller i will try to create two apis one is to fetch the data from the database and another is to insert the record into the database so simply I will be creating these two APIs, not all APIs like how we can update or how we can delete. I'm not going to cover. Uh, I'm just trying to create two APIs, one of them which will be inserting the data into the database. Another will try to fetch out the data from the database. And I will show you how you can use in-memory database. So for in-memory database, you need to have some configuration done and then you can use it. So let me minimize this one. Okay, let me go to the source. Let me go to main and Java. So here I'm trying to create this uh, packages. So let me create the entity first. Okay, let me try to create a repository. If you don't know how you can use JPA, then uh, with the help of JPA also, we can try to create the entity and uh, a repository. So if you don't know how you can do with the JPA, there is a video on my channel. You can go for it and then try to see. Here I'm simply trying to create uh, the traditional method. Okay, so let me come to create a service. Okay, let me rename this. So go to the refactor and do rename. So here it is service. Okay, now coming to the other package, let me create controller. Okay. Okay. Let me create the entity first. So I'm going to use, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a product entity and uh, we'll try to insert some product and retrieve some product from the database. So let's say the entity is product. Let me add couple of annotations for this class. So it is an entity class. So let me add the entity. Let me create the table for it. So I'm using the table. Let's say name of the table is product table, something like that product table. Okay. So with the help of Lombok dependency, I'm directly going to generate the all argument constructor, no argument constructor and geta, getter and setters with the help of data. So with the help of data, we can create our getter and setter. So now coming to the product class, let me create couple of instance here. So let's say I'm going to create the product ID, which is of integer type. Let me create uh, name of product, which is of a string type. 
okay and let me create the price so let's say it's double okay so we have created this three instance variable for the product okay now let me try to add id annotation so that id our integer id will be acting like a id for this uh, product table so and uh, what i want i want this to be auto generated so i'm trying to use this annotation generate value and the strategies for this should be identity so that it will be identical unique so we are done with the creation of entity now coming to the repository let me create the repository here so let's say uh, it is product repo so product repo it is an interface so add this now let me yeah let me extend this repository with the jpa repository okay and we need to provide this to parameters here so one is the entity entity name so our entity is product and the id type of your entity so it's it is integer so we are done with the creation of product now coming to the service let me create a interface called product service so it is product service okay let me create couple of methods here so two method I will be creating here one is to get the data from the database one is to insert the data so let's say get product from from or get product by ID something like that so we can uh, get one product uh, for which we will provide the ID so let's say it is returning the product itself and so let's say it's product and let's say it is public here what I'm trying to do I'm just trying to provide the ID so based upon the ID we'll fetch out the product from the database and then we'll return it so okay let me try to remove this we are not implementing it here so okay now the second method I'm just trying to create is to insert the product into the database so let's say it is insert product and we'll provide the product reference here so let's say product now coming to creation of implementation class let me create a package called impl okay and there i will try to create a class which is product service impl so that i can implement all the product service method that we have created here so let's say it is product service impl okay let me add this let me implement the product service here so where is the product service okay so product service so we need to implement the unimplemented method of the product service so i'm doing that okay so let me try to use the jpa provided method so that we can uh, try to call the find by id and the save so for that what we need we need to auto wire the product repository so that we can use the jpa provided method so let's say it is product repo okay product repo and with the help of this what i will try to do i will try to uh, call the jpa provided method which is find by id and find by like you can see find by id is there and here what i will do i will just provide the id that we are passing here as an argument and then try to get it so it is fetching up the product from the database based upon the id and then returning it similarly what i try to do i just try to save the product into the database so let's say i'm going to call the same method of the jpa and then pass the product here so it will save the product into the database and return it so we created these two methods now coming to the controller let me create the mappings first so it is product controller okay now let me annotate this because this is a, a controller class so all the apis will be created here so let me annotate this with the rest controller and 
let me map the map some URL here. So it is a class level mapping. Let's say it's API and then coming to the product controller. Let me try to create the get mapping first. So let's say it is get mapping and here what I'm passing uh, product and then ID. So let's say it is product and then we are passing the ID. So based upon the ID, we'll fetch the product from the database. Now come coming down. Let me create the method for it. So it is public product get product from DB or get product by ID, something like that by ID. Okay. And let me try to, so uh, we need to call this uh, implemented method that we have created here in the product service IMPL. So for that, what I need to do, I need to auto wire the product service here. So let's say auto wire private product service, product service. Before going there, uh, I just want to tell you that because we have implemented the product service IMPL here. So this class will be acting like a service class. So that is why I'm annotating it here. So now coming here, we have created the instance of product service with the help of this, what we'll call, we'll call the method that we have implemented. So let me call the get product by ID and let me pass here the ID. So what I'm going to do now, okay, let me do this. Now what I need to do, I need to pass this ID as a path variable. So for that I'm using this annotation path variable and then we'll pass the ID here so that uh, we'll pass this ID in the form of URL and then that ID will come here to the argument and then it will go there to the uh, method and then it will fetch out the product from the database and then simply return it. Similarly, what we need to do, we need to create a post mapping now. So let me create the post mapping. So let me copy it and let me just uh, paste down and then let me create the post mapping here. So it is post mapping. Okay. And what we need to do here, we need to pass some URL. So let me try to pass the URL as an insert. So we can access this method with the help of this URL. And let's say it is insert only. And what I'm passing here, I need to pass the request body. So whatever request we are sending from the client, so that will come here as a request body. And then it will be converted to the uh, Java object and save it to the database. So let me come here let me pass the reference of product okay and let me try to call the method which is insert which we have implemented into the product service IMPL and pass the reference of the product here so it will simply insert that and then okay get product by ID okay it is not that let me try to insert product okay so we are done with the creation of the APIs also now coming to the uh, let's say, let me try to put a slash here. So yeah, it is working. So it is good with the create with the creation of APIs. We are good. Now coming to the configuration, I need to do some basic configuration so that we can use the H2 database. So I opened this application dot properties file. The configuration are handy with me. So I will copy paste from here. I will explain you each configuration why we are doing that. So you can see it is spring h2 dot console dot enable so this will enable the h2 console so that we can go to the browser and try to see how the h2 console is looking like how the h2 database will be looking like so this annotation is for that uh, this configuration is for that now coming to the url uh, you can see we have passed the url here and this is the database so this whole thing is acting like a url this is the driver name and this is the username. We are not passing any password here and this is the dialect. So we are done with the configuration. Now coming to, uh, let me change the port for this or let, let it be 8080, which is the default port for the application. So let me try to uh, run this and then try to show you how the H2 database is looking like. So let me try to run this application. Okay. 
so uh, it is up on 8080 port number now coming here you can see this h2 console is available at slash h2 console so we need to access this okay now you can see here uh, the url for the database is this and the user is sa so let me go to the browser and then try to show you how the h2 console we can access and how it is looking like so simply we need to go to the localhost 8080 the port number on which your application is up and then you can type this h2 hyphen console and then you can hit it so you can see this is looking like h2 uh, this is the page of h2 console here you can see already it is uh, given the url that we have set here in the application.properties file you can see this is the url that we have set and this is the username so everything is provided there you can see the username is also there now you need to do nothing you need to directly try the connection so let me connect it so you can see this is the h2 database that is open and we you can see here the product table is all already created because we are using the dialect so let's select this and run this you can see we have created this database no record is there into the database so let me go to the postman and try to hit some uh, try to insert some record there so let's say it is uh, let me go there so come to the product controller you can see the mapping is api and then for insert it is insert so let me go to the postman now so application is upon 8080 locally and the api uh, and the mapping is api and insert for the insert so we are passing this uh, request here so name of the product is mobile and the price is this we are not passing the id in the form of request because id is auto generated so let me try to send it and let's see how it is working so you can see one record is inserted so coming to the h2 database let me go to the h2 database you can see earlier no record was there let me try to hit this okay let me try to run this so you can see one record is inserted similarly what you can do you can create another record so let me try to insert here laptop and let me change the price for this and let me try to hit it so second record is also inserted okay with the name laptop and price is 40000 now coming to the database you can see you can run this and then you can see this is also inserted one note i just want to uh, remind you that whenever you are trying to run the rerun the application so what will done so in the h2 database this record will not be saved so whenever you will rerun the application it will remove everything from here it will freshly create one table and then you need to again insert those record here so whenever you will rerun the application everything will be clear now coming to the uh, this is the insert mapping that is working fine now coming to the get mapping let me try to fetch some record from the database and then show you so coming here uh, let me go to the product controller and then show you what is the api for the get so it is api and then product and then we need to pass the id so come to the postman let me try to do that so here we need to pass the api and then we need to pass the product and then what we can do we can pass the id so let me try to send the id one and here you need to change the method to get mapping and let me send it so you can see we are fetching out the uh, record one product one so for, for product one we are getting all the record from the database similarly you can go for the two also we have only two records so we can fetch these two things so you can see how we can use the in memory database with the spring boot and uh, how we can create these apis and how we can insert the record into the database in memory database and how we can fetch it from there so this is about this video if you like the video please hit the like button and please subscribe the channel for more such content